Thanks to the Algerian War of Independence from 1958 to 1962, Algeria were footballing minnows. After the breakaway from France, they won two games in three World Cup qualification campaigns. They had a solitary African Nations Cup campaign to their name, going out of the group stages thanks to losses to Ethiopia and the Ivory Coast. By 1980 though, Algeria had the likes of Lakhtar Baloumi and Tej Bansola, both netted twice at that spring's African Nations Cup where Algeria made it to the final in Lagos, but they were beaten 3-0 by Nigeria. Two years later, Algeria had reached the final stage of the World Cup qualification where, in the same Surilaire Stadium in Lagos, Algeria vanquished bad memories of 1980 by beating Nigeria 2-0. They won 4-1 on aggregate. They were going to Spain. They were prepared by playing former European Cup winners Real Madrid and Benfica. They were drawn the European champions and two-time world champions West Germany, Chile and Austria. West Germany boasted two of the world's best players at the time, Karl-Heinz Rummenigge and Paul Breitner. June 16, 1982, Algeria stunned the West Germans 2-1 with a winning goal from Lakhdar Baloumi. Man of the match and Algerian defender Chabé Merzakan recalled, One German player even said that he would play against us with a cigar in his mouth. After all, who has ever heard of a German team that doesn't do its homework? West Germany picked up the piece with a win over Chile whilst Algeria floundered against Austria. Algeria recovered to beat Chile 3-2 on June 24th though. Unfortunately, this gave West Germany and Austria enough time to sign the Nick Tang Griffs backed von Gijon, the non-aggression pact of Gijon to you and I. With one game to play, this is how the group stood. Austria had four points from two games, Algeria four from three, and West Germany two points from as many games. Chile had lost all three. Let's forget about Chile. The El Molinon Stadium in Gijon, June the 25th. West Germany started in the most West German manner imaginable. Efficient, attacking, penetrative. Horst Hubrex found the net inside 10 minutes. They were to take the game by the scruff of the neck. The Algeria loss was forgotten. The game was a matter of by how many they would win. And then nothing. 80 minutes of turgid, plodding passes. No attempts on goal. No attempts to hide the non-aggression pact. West Germany needing just a win to qualify as group winners, qualified with the 1-0 win. Austria needing anything less than a two-goal loss, qualified too. The backlash was inevitable. Commentator Eberhard Stanjek refused to commentate on the game for long stretches of time. A local Gijon newspaper printed the match report the following day in the crime section. Angry Algerians in attendance threw money at the players, the Spanish in the crowd chanted for Algeria and shouted let them kiss at the 22 co-conspirators on the pitch. A West German even burned the national flag in the aftermath. It was labelled the disgrace of Gijon. West Germany's manager Jupp Dowell defended the team, stating that they took the foot off the pedal due to Karl-Heinz Rummenigge's lack of fitness. Neither team were punished. West Germany reached the final where justice was served in the form of a loss to Italy. Algeria would have to wait until 2014 to reach the knockout stages of the World Cup where they of course faced Germany. Germany would progress, going on to win the tournament. As a result of the disgrace of Gijon, FIFA and UEFA would ensure that final group stage matches be played at the same time, from Euro 1984 onwards. It eradicated most potential match fixing, but not all. We'll get on to you Denmark and Sweden and 2004 in a future episode. But let's slide the doors open, gauge the effect of the butterfly and rewrite the football in history books. Here's what would have happened if the disgrace of Gijon never happened. West Germany blitzed the Austrians with a 10 minute barrage of attacks, Austria having scraped through wins over Algeria and Chile were at the mercy of the West German captain Karl-Heinz Rummenigge. The Bayern Munich forward who had led West Germany to the European Championships two years prior was fresh off a hat-trick against Chile. He scored two more in Gijon. Austria were defeated 4-0. Algerians in the ground rejoiced. They qualified in second place behind West Germany. Such was the nature of the 1982 World Cup. The second round draw was devised of four groups of three. West Germany were drawn England and Spain, whilst Algeria were fed France and Northern Ireland. Due to the energy and overworking of a long season, Karl-Heinz Rummenigge was ruled out for the rest of the tournament through injury. They were picked apart by Spain and England as Spain qualified for the final four in their home tournament. Meanwhile, Algeria were fresh 3-0 at the Vicente Calderon, which was largely decked out in Algerian green and white. Later that week, the Spaniards in attendance became their 12th man in a 2-1 win over Northern Ireland. Due to the nature of a three-team group, France's final game with Northern Ireland was contested three days later. France and Algeria were locked on two points apiece. France needed to avoid a two-goal loss to Northern Ireland. They played out a dull, nil-nil draw. Algeria were eliminated and returned home heroes. Karl-Heinz Rummenigge returned from injury to the West German team the following year with a mountain to climb to qualify for Euro 1984. In his absence, West Germany had dropped points in Northern Ireland, Turkey and Austria. Northern Ireland would pip Germany to qualification by goal difference. 
Norman Whiteside and Jerry Armstrong start in the tournament, working it all the way to the semi-final with wins over Portugal and Romania. They will be eliminated by eventual winners and hosts, France. The Green and White Army qualify for Mexico 86 in a collision course with Algeria. Both teams have been picked off by Spain and Brazil, and if either side could muster a win, they would progress. They drew one all. Meanwhile, on the other half of the draw, West Germany had bounced back from their embarrassment of not being able to defend their European Championship. They had been humbled 1-0 by Uruguay in the opener before two Rudy Volley goals earned them a win over Scotland. Two late, sickening goals from Denmark in the final game left them hanging in the balance. West Germany awaited the result of Uruguay vs Scotland the following day. The standings were as follows. Denmark had qualified, Uruguay had all but qualified with two points with a game to spare. Germany also had two points but relied on Uruguay defeating Scotland. Scotland had one point, they needed to get something. Uruguay simply needed to avoid loss by six goals or more. Scotland's goal difference was minus one whilst Germany's was minus two. Anything but a loss for Scotland would qualify both Uruguay and Scotland. A non-aggression pact was made. 90 minutes in the Mexican heat, Uruguay and Scotland succeeded in keeping the score at 0-0. BBC cut the feed of the match at half time for a repeat of Only Fools and Horses. The daily record called for Alex Ferguson's resignation, but the Scottish contingent in Mexico were delighted for the nation's first qualification out of the group stages. West Germany were eliminated. Almost as an act of karma, Scotland were destroyed 5-0 by Argentina in the round of 16, and Uruguay would go on to be embarrassed by Morocco at the same stage. FIFA and UEFA belatedly agreed to play their final group stage fixtures in their competition simultaneously from Euro 88 onwards. Let's check out the winners and losers. West Germany, mainly losers, because they were hampered by Karl-Heinz Rummenigge's injury, bowing out at the second group stage in 1982, as well as failing to qualify for Euro 84. They were further embarrassed at the 1986 World Cup by Scotland and Uruguay. Karl-Heinz Rummenigge, another loser, because he has lost his place in the West German and Bayern Munich teams. He was forced to play out the remainder of his career at Swiss club Servette from 1983 to 1989. He would be selected for the 1986 World Cup but would not see any action. Algeria, big winners, because regardless of their showing at the 1982 World Cup, they were always going to be winners. But for a flawed format at the 1982 World Cup, Algeria might have made the knockout stages of the tournament. Fans will always remember that first win over West Germany though. Northern Ireland, winners, because hashtag GAWA were at their hottest in the early 80s and exploited Rummenigge's injury in Euro 84 qualification. The likes of Whiteside and Armstrong dragged them kicking and screaming to the semi-finals where only the wizardry of Michel Platini could defeat them. Spain, the biggest winners, because they had eliminated Olympian West Germany and a path to the final via England and France were clear. The momentum upset the Italians in the final with Marco Tardelli and Paolo Rossi in their ranks. Spain were world champions in 1982 and were European finalists in 1984. This video was made as part of the What If Football launch day. Each week, starting from Monday morning, a new scenario will be published right here on YouTube.